everybody, I'm Dr. Colin Skinner. I've got a PhD in molecular biology. To date, I've done eight long distance walks. I've walked from New York to California twice now. In 1988, on the second night in America, I ended up sleeping in bushes beneath the Twin Towers. In Pennsylvania, I ended up in a, a wood where there were rattlesnakes. I was just dozing off when I heard this heavy thing coming through the woods and it was a black bear and uh, I had to lay totally still inside my tent while a black bear sniffed the tent from one end to the other and that was pretty scary. Uh, the highest temperature I had was about 40 degrees uh, C, uh, about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. That was in, in Staten Island. I actually collapsed from heat exhaustion on the Staten Island and was unconscious for three hours by the roadside. Then the lowest temperature was minus 30 when I got to Utah. Then my boots that I had um, had got damp from my sweaty feet and they froze up solid so I couldn't actually put my boots on the next day. I had to take 20 minutes to warm my boots up just to get them onto my feet. It took an hour to pack up the tent at minus 8 Fahrenheit and uh, if I touched the metal my fingers would stick to the metal. And luckily when I got to Marysvale there was a little cafe and the postmaster for the town was sitting there with three other people and they were amazed to see me coming down the road. His name was Norm Gibson and I met him in 1989 but I met him again 20 years later and ended up staying with him as I did the walk again. In 2003 uh, my mother had pancreatic cancer and she died in 2003 and seeing what happened to her um, with the illness that she had made me want to use um, the story that I had already to try and help hospices. All the way across America I was staying with hospice people, so hospice volunteers and people they knew and that was actually good because there could be several hundred miles between one town and another and with very few places to stay. Through the hospices I'd actually have a place to stay and they'd take care of me and enable me to get all the way across America. I, I visited a hospice in Detroit and gave a talk to them then had to walk out through the town in areas where people had been shot and the local caretaker for the hospice drove out to check that I was still alive. As I walked into Flint, this homeless man came walking towards me. I nodded to him and he nodded to me and I thought, OK, that's it. And so I turned around, he was reaching into a bag and I, you know, I my sort of life flashed in front of my eyes. I you know, envisaged him pulling a gun out and shooting me there in the middle of this city. But what he did, um, he couldn't talk, but he pulled a stack of quarters out. He gave me three dollars and change because he'd seen my hospice sign on my back and actually gave me three dollars for hospice in the middle of night in Flint in this area which is supposed to be really dangerous. And he couldn't talk, he had a problem with his voice. Um, so he just gave me the money and then sort of raised his hand in a salute. It's been great for me that I've met some really caring, warm-hearted people involved with hospices that take care of people and allow them to you know, live life as much as possible to the full when they have life-threatening diseases. I'm also um, married and so I'm a husband and I'm also a father. I've got a son who's 17 now. Having you know, been in situations that are dangerous and worrying, uh, to actually come back to somewhere that's home and is safe is actually quite a pleasant experience.